are numbers. If we look at how many solutions does a linear equation have, an equation of the form y equals mx plus b, it will always have exactly one solution. Okay. If we look at equations that are quadratic of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, well then things are a little bit more interesting. Usually it has two solutions. Okay. This is when it factors into two different linear terms. Maybe something like y equals x minus 1 times x plus 2 has two different solutions. Occasionally it has only one solution. This is when it factors with a repeated term. But what you don't really realize is there really are two solutions. They're just the same thing. Okay. But sometimes we get a quadratic with no solution. x squared plus 1 we try to set it equal to zero and solve, we get no solution because we can't have a square equal to a negative number. This is a problem. We want everything to always be the same in math. Every linear equation had one solution. We want every quadratic to have two, every cubic to have three, and so on. And in order to guarantee that, we need a solution to this equation right here. Now, we didn't have one already or at least we weren't aware we needed one. So it needs a new name, and we choose to call that number i. i is defined to be the square root of negative one. It has a little bit of an unfortunate name. We tend to call this an imaginary number because historically they kind of thought they were making them up at the time. But they really are actual numbers that have actual basis in fact. We need them in order to be able to have enough answers to all our different types of equations. Okay. So even though we call them imaginary numbers, it doesn't actually mean they're imaginary. Now, an imaginary number is any number that can be written as a combination a plus bi, where a and b are what we call real numbers, meaning the kind of numbers you're used to, fractions, decimals, whole numbers, even a pi or an e, but things without an i in it. Okay. Now, sometimes there is no a term. If a number is just a real number times i, we call it purely imaginary. If a number has no b part, so it's just a number a, it's just a real number. But all of those are still complex numbers. In fact, complex numbers encompass all the types of numbers you're familiar with. The counting numbers, fractions, decimals, irrational numbers like the square root of 2 or pi, and numbers with an i in them. They're a catch-all. Now, let's make sure we know how to deal with complex numbers. Imagine we want to simplify the square root of minus 27. Well, just like we do if it was a positive number, we want to separate out the perfect square inside 27 from the part that's not a perfect square. So 9 times 3. But we also want to separate out the part that's going to be imaginary, so the negative 1. And now I'm going to take the square root of each piece individually. Square root of negative 1, square root of 9, and square root of 3. Okay. The square root of negative 1 becomes an i. The square root of 9 becomes a 3, and we're still left with that square root of 3 that we can't do anything about. Now, let's make sure we know how to work with complex numbers. Namely, we're concerned with the four uh, arithmetic operations, addition and subtraction, multiplication, and division. Addition and subtraction are relatively easy. You combine like terms. In this case, we're treating the i like a variable, like we would an x or a y and we just add the terms with an i and add the terms without an i. So in this case, the negative 1 and the 2 are going to be added together, and the 3i and the minus 4i are going to be added together to give us a final answer of 1 minus 1i. Okay. We could do the same thing with subtraction, just remembering that the subtraction would affect both terms here because of the parentheses. Now we have a multiplication problem. Multiplication, we're again going to treat this like a variable. 
And so we're going to FOIL. Negative 1 times the 2 gives me negative 2. Negative 1 times the minus 4i gives me plus 4i. 3i times the 2 gives me 6i. And 3i times minus 4i gives me minus 12i squared. Now this is where things get a little bit different. Okay? We are still going to combine the parts with i and the parts without i. But the beauty of complex numbers is you should never need to have a power of i appear. Because i squared, well we know what that is. i squared is really negative 1 by definition. So what does this turn into? We have the negative 2 plus 4i plus 6i. But here we really have minus 12 times minus 1, which is positive 12. So now combining our like terms, minus 2 plus 12 is 10. 4i plus 6i is 10i. And again, we're able to get a complex number of the form a plus bi, no powers of i needed. Now, when we try for division, it's a little bit more complicated. We're going to need a tool. So let's take a step back and introduce the conjugate. So if we have a complex number, minus 1 plus 3i, the conjugate and the notation for that is to put a bar over the number. The conjugate is to change the sign on the imaginary portion. So whatever part has an i, you change the sign on the i. Okay. So if z were minus 1 minus 2i, the conjugate would be minus 1 plus 2i. You change the sign on just the i portion. Now. We've seen something a lot like this before. When we rationalized a denominator, we often multiplied top and bottom by the conjugate, which was changing the sign on the square root part. It makes sense that it's the same name here, because if you remember, i is really a square root of negative 1. So the conjugate here is the same as the conjugate we use to rationalize a denominator. So we're going to use the same trick. In order to clean up a division, because we should never have i's remaining in the denominator, so in order to clean up the division, I'm going to multiply top and bottom of the fraction. Let's try that again. By the conjugate of the denominator. Now I have to multiply top and bottom by that number because it's really just multiplying by 1. And I can always multiply by 1. And now we're going to FOIL and see what happens. So on the top, Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 1 times 4i is minus 4i. 3i times 2 is 6i. And 3i times 4i is 12i squared. On the bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4i is 8i. Minus 4i times 2 is minus 8i. And minus 4i times plus 4i is minus 16i squared. Now there's a couple things we want to notice. First of all, by choosing to multiply top and bottom by that conjugate, the i terms will always cancel each other out in the denominator. Because plus i minus i is like nothing ever happened. Also, we have these i squared terms that are really minus 1. Okay. So what do we end up with? On top, I have minus 2, minus 4i plus 6i is plus 2i, and 12 times minus 1 is negative 12. On bottom, I have 4, and then minus 16 times minus 1 is plus 16. This turns into minus 14 plus 2i over 20. Now. It's convention to always write complex numbers as a plus bi. So I'm actually going to separate these fractions out. Minus 14 divided by 20 is really minus 7 tenths. And 2 divided by 20 is really 1 tenth i. And we get our final answer. Okay. Just remember, the answer to a complex number question should never have i's in a denominator or powers of i.